makes you think. What was it like for the original prospectors? What was it like when Edmonton was known as the back door to the Yukon? The Klondike Gold Rush, when it, when it happened, there's a couple guys found a lot of gold, news got out. It was a rough time. It was a really, really rough time, and most people went home with nothing. Sure, everyone always says, well, the gold was better back then, and they got all the good gold. But it's not like people were just stubbing their toe on toaster-sized nuggets. People hear that there's a better way, a better life, and they go out and they struggle for it, and they struggle hard. With this rain, the river's going to be high. It's going to be harder to find any good gold. Putting it all in perspective, I have it so incredibly easy right now compared to what it was like for these guys back in the early 1900s trying to find a way to make gold. No matter how hard I'm working out there, it feels good to know that you are being independent, that you're out there searching for gold, living under your own schedule. That makes me want to continue this. No matter how miserable it gets over the next few days, in the rain, on the river, it will not even compare to the lives of the original prospectors heading up through Edmonton to get to that Klondike. So join me in this video as we put on our rain gear, head up the river, and see if we can find any gold, even though the river's running really high, hiding most of the good stuff. Right now, there's not a lot of bank left. The water's really high. And of course, I forgot my anchor. Luckily, I had some spare paracord lying around. Try to quadruple that for overnight parking. She's in the water and is ready to go camping sea dew gold mining in beautiful Alberta. Welcome to the end of the world. Oh! <laughs> Just a little rain. Off in the distance is some Canada Day fireworks. I just did a bit of a clean out. I always think this looks really nice in the pan. It always looks like a lot more than it actually is, but just roughly panning this, you can see the floating gold like crazy right now. Just roughly panning this into this tub, of course, so I don't lose everything, but that does look pretty. I don't know how much gold is here. Never really tell. Maybe a gram if I'm lucky. I can only imagine what it would be like to be one of those old timers coming out here and trying to pay the pills looking for gold. Being able to be here on one of these remote Alberta rivers, I took a sea dew so that I could fit this small high banker. The thing probably keeps maybe 80-85% of the gold. The rest is lost, but considering it's only a three-foot recovery area, that uh, dream matting is working pretty good. It's really hard gold to find here too. I'm just out here completely alone on this gravel bar. I've got my little tent set up. The days are long, full moon. And while everyone's enjoying their Canada day, I'm enjoying a day out in the wilderness, essentially a backpacking sea dew camping trip and actually finding a little bit of gold here and there. Beautiful stuff. Interesting side note, this river has been coming up like crazy. Seemed to be having bad luck with high water. Last time I was here, it was at about 400 and then rose to 500. Right now it's running at about 750 and upstream it looks like 900 or 1000 is coming my way, maybe even 1200. 
I don't know how high it's gonna come up the gravel bar here. I'm gonna move everything well up overnight and make sure that sea dew is well anchored because the last thing I want is to lose the sea dew down this river and then be stuck with all my gear here and no way to bring it home. It's kind of the lifeline right there. And even if the engine died, I could float it downstream if it wasn't too hairy. You just use the use the paddle and kind of move around, but if the CD's completely gone, don't know what I'd do. So make sure it's really tied up nicely over the next couple days and just keep an eye on it. Maybe wake up in the middle of the night to check on it, make sure it hasn't floated away. Slightly worrying, but it's this right here that keeps me going. And I just I just love looking at that at the end of the day. Beautiful little clean out right there. It might even be over a gram, to be honest. That's beautiful. I feel not a lot of people get to come out to a river like this and actually pan for gold like the old timers would have. This is the this is the mining rig. It's just a sea dew, and I've strapped this to the back. I didn't put any holes anywhere. I've just got that tow hook strapped there and then a bungee cord holding it down on either side. We're about to see a beaver come out of the water right in front of us. Let's check this out. How you doing there, buddy? You're really letting me get quite close. The fireworks in the background, of course. Happy Canada Day. Just right now, there's been a whole bunch of rain upstream and the water is coming up quite quickly. I have the sea dew. It's tied up to this tree right now. I'm not sure exactly how much higher the water is going to come. I'm hoping the tree doesn't get towed away. I'm going to set an alarm for the middle of the night just so I can check on it. That's probably the biggest risk with the water as it's rising. You get all of these logs and debris coming into the river. And then as soon as the river starts to drop again, it may still be really high water, but at least all the debris is sort of passed. It'll be interesting over the next couple of days as this continues to rise just how bad it gets. Good morning. This may be one of those situations of, thanks to technology, I can sense this impending doom. I put that about 10 feet from the water's edge last night, up from the water's edge last night. And here is The new water's edge. So there comes a time where reality strikes and my crazy ideas no longer make sense. Honestly, I've been up all night throughout the night hearing beavers smacking around on the river and just being worried about the sea dew. The water's been coming up like crazy. I know I probably look terrible. Uh, didn't sleep too, too great. Right now, in Edmonton, it's already up to, I think, 850. Upstream, it's already at 1300. And you see the graph and it's just like going steeper and steeper. It's, it's a straight line up right now. It's gonna start getting dangerous. Uh, I've heard some interesting stories. Another miner on the river was, was telling me they were here for a 2500 flood. Their boat was pulled in here. Their tent was in a little clearing over there and the water was right up to the edge of these trees. And they say they got stuck here for three days until the water level started going down because there were just entire islands of debris. Like couldn't really sleep at night because they were concerned their boat was gonna get taken away by a log and there's just like cracking, crunching noises as all this debris was coming down the river. I don't think it's gonna be that bad, but I'm sitting here with a little sea dew. <laughs> um, and it's not like the gold here is spectacular enough to be risking my life. From 900 to 1300, like this water's gonna be right up high and there's definitely gonna be some issues for me. So I'm not spending another night out on the river. That's for sure. Keep you updated. Uh, <laughs> always interesting, always interesting. That tent is getting awfully close to the water's edge. And it just started drizzling, so I may just have to pack it up wet. My pump was completely out of the water a little while ago when I shut down. The water has since risen. That pile of cobbles there is exactly a hundred shovels of just kind of this stuff here. 
not particularly good gold, but it's what I can get to. I always find it kind of neat looking at the silt coming off the far end. There'll be maybe 15 to 20% of my gold just sitting down here, and the other 80, 85% will be in this dream mat right there. I didn't let it run before I shut her down, so I'm trying to not not run it empty. I think that'll that'll help with recovery a little bit. I don't want my cedar to go floating away. Let's go check on that. I'd say my anchor point is looking quite precarious at the moment. Definitely time to consider packing up that tent. Yeah, I don't wanna, I don't want to be taking any chances. I forgot my anchor, so I have to tie to something, and the next tie point is pretty far away, so. I may have to bury a log in here to hold on to the sea dew while I'm packing the tent if it comes up much quicker. But I'm done digging for the day. Be interesting what the, uh, what the launch ramp looks like at this water level. Foamy, your tent, your sleeping bag. Throw my little safety kit there. All your uh, tools there, fire extinguisher here. Empty container of concentrates, since I'm not gonna have time to fill that one. Still plenty of space. I usually throw some food up there. Gold pan and classifier. Things are starting to get pretty real here. This just made a bunch of clunking around and managed to set itself down right next to shore. There's my sea -Doo. I was just running over here when I heard it smacking against the gravel. That would have done some damage to a sea -Doo. A little reality check. Just got a pan, a classifier, and a shovel left in the gravel bar. I'm going to do a sweep and uh, let's hope this baby starts. <laughs> oh, there's just a ton more debris starting to come down. This is getting, it's getting slightly concerning. Finally ready to go down river. I've had my fun for now. Wish I could have stayed another day and dug some more gold, but it was still a really great camping trip. Just love being out here. It's beautiful. Got to see some interesting weather. It's nice sunny weather. Actually slept fairly comfortably last night if it wasn't for the fact I kept getting up to check on the sea dew. This thing is like I'm standing in water right now. It's it's just rising really quickly right now, so it's not worth sticking around. I'm wearing sunglasses, even though it's not sunny, because just like if you've ever ridden a motorcycle, you always need a visor or something over your eyes. Even if you're going slow with this thing, you still need something. So I just use my sunglasses when it's sunny, and maybe it's not so sunny right now, but they still work. Hopefully I can get this thing down to the launch ramp without any complications, and uh, it's been a good trip. I had a lot of fun. Well, that stick <laughs> was 10 feet in from the edge last night. Come on, baby. Start throwing me.
There you go. Plug the intake, idle down. Hopefully, I have maneuvering thrusters. Try this out. It's actually quite peaceful. Just so much debris in the water, floating everywhere, all around me here. It's tricky not to hit any of it. I mean, you don't want to hit that kind of thing, but those you can see. Just with the, the jet pump on these things, I'm not sure if I got a bunch of stuff in the impeller or just over the grate. Just letting her try to slosh out for a minute. See if she runs. The engine seems to continue starting for me, which is nice. Uh, so I don't have to worry about paddling into the launch ramp there. It doesn't really like to paddle very well. I'm just gonna float through a little debris field here. Let's see if I have my buddy in here. I'm on maneuvering thrusters from here on out. A quick view of the carnage. I have to pick that out of there somehow. Alright. Not too bad, not too bad. Something to keep in mind if you're uh, sea dew gold mining. Well, first of all, don't go in the river. <laughs> but second of all, um, yeah, when the water is rising, you get a lot of debris. When the water's high like this, you can actually be out here and run pretty safely. It's not the height of the water, it's the fact that as the water rises, it sucks all the debris off of the banks and everything. Let's shut this down, see if it can drop off whatever's on the intake. But yeah, and then once it hits that peak and starts to come down again, it should be safe to get back out here because there's gonna be a little less debris. But we're just floating on down to the launch ramp here. Nothing else seems to be holding up. Boat's not sinking. Ah, <sighs> yeah. It's more fun when you're going fast. Come on, slosh. Slosh some stuff around. Let's try that again. No, she's just not going to plane. Not going to plane. Okay, maneuvering thrust just to the ramp. Well, that's a pretty waterfall. So I just wanted to get some film of it as I'm puttering down. But a uh, interesting thing I just discovered by doing that is I definitely do not have the ability to go upriver in this current. Uh, well, I guess when I get to the launch ramp, I can pull into shore, clean out the intake grate, and then I should have enough power to power up onto the trailer. Yeah, I'll just pull in on sh onto shore when I get there and, and clean it up. I was thinking of pulling in on the way down, but I just, yeah. <laughs> probably best to just eye on the prize. Engine temperature seems to be good, so I haven't plugged any of those holes. Just keeping an eye on it, though. Gold planet. <laughs> oh, 
Always a good time. Always a good time. I'm pretty glad I I didn't go up river as far as I did last time to get to that good gold. Um, this is Prospector's Point. It's completely buried. <laughs> Looking forward to seeing what this launch ramp looks like. Hopefully I can get this thing on the trailer. Well, this actually looks like it's gonna be quite manageable. One shot though, hands off the camera. See if I can demonstrate how to do this. Front corner hits it and then kick it over full steering. So we are on a trailer. So before you drive away, you always want to make sure you hook up your winch here. So that doesn't cause you any trouble. And then I always leave my passenger window open and the vehicle running, just so I don't accidentally lock myself out on the launch ramp. All right. E-brake, very important. And off we go.